As we know, retro is in. And this week we take another look at what has to be the most extreme scratch-built RV, the Deco Liner. And we'll meet the unique person behind this one-of-a-kind creation. You won't believe what went into building this insane retro-style motorhome. Then, with the increase in the popularity of truck campers, one of the hardest things to learn is loading that camper on your pickup bed. Jeff Johnston shows us some tricks he's learned over the years that will simplify and make loading that camper a lot easier. Later, Michelle Fontaine shows us a great RV destination that's loaded with history and plenty of things to see and do. This little seaport town was made famous years ago in a movie that starred Julia Roberts. Yes, we're talking about Mystic, Connecticut, another great RVing Today destination. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by GoPower. If you're ever visiting the area and see this unusual vintage looking spaceship coming at you, don't panic. You're not in Area 51. As a matter of fact, if you follow it down this dirt road, you'll come to one of the most creative places in the country and the home to the Deco Liner. The person behind this original creation is Randy Grubb. A normal looking person, but underneath that normality lies a very imaginative creative mind with the skills and talent to bring his ideas to fruition. We asked Randy where the idea for the deco liner came from. The deco liner was actually inspired, I think of it as Flash Gordon's motorhome. You know, Flash is getting older, he's not doing too much interstellar work anymore, those re-entries were kind of hard on him, and he needed a good low earth over vehicle. So I think of it as a 1940s vehicle. Everything in it should be period correct from somewhere around 1940. So I actually got to study a group of vintage travel trailers, 1933 to about 1937, the early, the early Boluses, uh, the predecessor to Airstream, uh, the Curtis Wrights, the Spartans. Those were a big influence going into the design of the deco liner. The front end was a unique piece that came into the sculpture. Um, and it really spoke to me that this was the right front end for the deco liner. If that front end looks somewhat familiar, well, you're somewhat dating yourself. And where did the inspiration come from to build this unique one-of-a-kind vehicle? What we're doing here is actually based on coach building. Uh, back in the 1920s, uh, and before that, all cars were hand-built. Before Henry Ford started uh, stamping them out, virtually all cars were hand-built. For instance, a Duesenberg, you bought a chassis, not a complete car, you bought a chassis. And then you went to a body builder, and they designed the body with you, and they hammered out that body for your car. Virtually all Duesenbergs were handmade, one of a kind cars. That was very common. That's where my coach building craft and the history comes from that, that history and that background. Carrying that forward, uh, it was about 15 years ago that I started to take classes from uh, Ron Covell, Professor Hammer, on how we actually take flat sheets of metal and hammer them into these compound curves that we can build fenders with. I have a long history in car building that, that stretches back to actually when my dad brought home a Model A when I was eight years old. And he taught me to weld when I was about 10 years old. And I actually started to build my first car when I was about 12 years old. So born in Southern California into hot rod culture and having a father that really shared that passion with me um, was really where I got the bug. And uh, that uh, serious medical condition has done nothing but get worse and worse over the years. And where we are today is um, I don't want to cut up an old car, I want to start with a clean sheet of paper and actually hammer all the components out from scratch. It's incredibly time consuming. Something like the deco liner represents almost 5,000 hours of labor out of these hands. 
So it's not a light undertaking, but I feel very, very fortunate and very, very lucky to be able to spend the time to create these unique one-of-a-kind sculptures. We'll get back and take a good look at the deco liner, but first, we have to take this short commercial break. When Bedford launched Aquachem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Bedford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, You'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Welcome back. The deco liner is a unique work of art or sculpture, and you would virtually have to spend a whole day just looking at all the details. So we asked Brandy to describe a few of them to us. The stairs up the back are how we get to the flying bridge, but they also allow a lot of light into the deco liner. The risers of the stairs actually have glass in them, and that's done for a variety of reasons. It lets light in, but it also allows the driver to see out the back using a traditional uh, rear view mirror in the traditional spot. As you know, most of the time when you're driving a square motorhome, you've got tail whip to worry about. The back of the de deco liner, because it's necked in, exhibits none of that but it would make difficult to see the, the back of the deco liner using side mirrors, so the glass in the staircase allows you to see out the back and makes it very, very easy to drive, even through heavy traffic. Now for the best part, let's take a look at the inside of the deco liner. So the whole deco liner is cut from, the structure is cut from three quarter inch solid plate aluminum. These were water jetted, and then hand routered and a lot of finessing to get this nice finish. Um, they be, the, the holes are there to get to the back side of the rivet. These are actually the bucking access to buck those rivets through. So they're functional and designed in one. All right, so here we are in the front of the deco liner where we have a nice little seating area. This is actually a vintage table that's color coordinated with the interior. This is our kind of our little entertainment center up here. We've got vintage 52 Pontiac speaker grills in a 1953 Oldsmobile dashboard that's been turned upside down. This little metal cover hides the Pioneer stereo. And in the lower part of the front seating, we've got our heat and air conditioning center right here with all the controls and the vents. Here we are in the back of the deco liner and there's a couple really neat things about it. You can see the glass risers in the stairs, which really allow great vision out and look at all the light it lets in. It's really great. I'm sitting on a futon. The futon is set up as a couch right now, but it folds backwards into a bed, which gives you over seven foot of bed length. Underneath the futon is a large storage area. In front of that, uh, we've got our little kitchenette area with our cabinet which features uh, a little wine rack and a little stove is in that box and just enough storage, just uh, you know, for the essentials, things like your shaker. And then over here, we've got your ice chest, vintage ice chest, the real deal. The ice chest was a vintage piece and it had this great deep stamp profile front that was so great that I actually cut the back panel off of it and that became the door for the cabinet over here. This is actually the back panel off the ice chest. So here we are in the downstairs driving compartment in the deco liner. It's set up just as any normal motorhome would be. Steering wheel, brakes, everything just like normal. But what's unique about the deco liner is on a nice day, hey, all you gotta do is pop the steering wheel off, reach above your head where the steering shaft has been stored, slide the steering shaft connection on. Now we're mechanically coupled up to the upper, upper stair. We put our safety locking pin in 
Now it's absolutely safe. There's no way for this coupling to come undone. The only other whiz-bang safety item that we have is the electronic shifter. This is a master shift. This is where the shifter is located, behind this panel, and it's an electronic shifting keypad. You push the button, it goes into gear. Once it's in gear, there's no way for it to go into new, neutral, park, or reverse without having your foot on the brake. So it's a safety feature. All of this is upstairs. The shifter, the brake, the gas, and you take your steering wheel up, and we can drive it from the roof. All right, so our staircase just folds down. Now we walk on up the stairs. We just sit down, attach the steering wheel up top, replace our locking pin, and now we're able to drive it from the roof. Our master shift, shifters down here, brake, gas, parking brake, everything we need, and a commanding view of the road. You actually have excellent visibility up here, your mirrors work great, and obviously you can see as far down the road as you need to see. And this is that sand cast dash that I talked about, carved from wood and then sand cast, featuring that vintage Stuart Warner survey speedometer. This is definitely the place to be on a nice day, up top. off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between. Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norco, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Greetings, Jeff Johnston here for RVing Today TV. Our Palomino camper was comfortably wrapped away and protected for the winter. But like a lot of camper owners, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be unwrapping it and loading it back on the truck for the spring. Some camper owners do this multiple times every year and they're really pretty good at it. Our first camper loading project took place at the Palomino factory with the aid of two Palomino tech experts. As you may imagine, that went pretty smoothly. Well, last spring, we loaded the camper ourselves at home for the first time, and it turned out the project was nowhere near as difficult or scary as we thought it might have been. It's springtime, we've dewinterized the camper, and now the trick is getting this camper onto that truck. It seems fairly easy at the outset. I mean, all you're doing is backing the truck under the camper, set it down, and clamp it down. But uh, you have to get it lined up right, you need to get it centered, you need to get it square, you, you want to make it a, a, a tidy load. And that's what becomes a little bit of a challenge, or it can be. We haven't done this for a little while, we're going to see how it goes, maybe it'll be quick and easy, maybe it won't. We'll find out soon. Not everyone is really, really good at backing a truck under a camper the first time or getting it lined up. And there's a lot of different ways people have come up with to do that. Different devices like a laser pointer on the back of the cab pointing at a target on the camper, something like that. We're just going to wing it, hope for the best. However, I did have, I, I put a couple of pieces of white tape here on the front of the camper and those will line up more or less with the tape stripes here in the middle of the bed. And that's just to help us kind of get a feel for when the camper is coming in. For a look at owner design solutions for camper loading guides and aids, check out truckcampermagazine.com. We already patched the holes from an ill-advised factory recommended dual battery setup attempt. Now these metal reinforcing bars, like I said, are smooth but they're slippery. So I've added some traction material, the self-adhesive rolls of traction material you can get to put on a step, for example, to keep from slipping on it. I've added that all the way across each of these braces, and 
that grit will help keep the camper from sliding around and moving too much once it's on the bed of the truck. Or that's the theory anyway. We're going to see how it works. This, this Rico Titan remote control that operates the jacks for the camper as well as the lift for the roof, really handy. Clear communication with your helper is important. A pair of inexpensive handheld radios work well for us. I'm going to be backing in and I'm going to stop when the bed clears the side of the camper a little bit. Just heads back there and I'm, like I say, hopefully you will see how close these white lines are to lining up because all I'm doing is lining up with the mirrors and matching the mirrors in the side of the bed to the jacks on the sides. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so uh, I also may need to raise it up a little bit so if the bed gets really close to this and it looks like it's not high enough, shout howdy ho or something like that. Alrighty. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So far so good. You're about six inches from it, from the bed. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It uh, looks pretty good side to side here. Yeah, it is high, so I'm going to lower it a little bit. And Pam, one thing to look for when the truck gets back here, make sure that this part of the bed is, this. Is, is clearing this little extension on the body. Okay. But I think it looks good so far. What about two inches? Got it. Well, we've got, you know, a couple inches here, a couple inches on the other side. It could be this way a little bit, but looks like it's looks like it's going to fit. It really can't be that easy. It, it's got to be something else going on here, but we'll, I'll take it if it is. I should also mention that because it's hard to get my head in here sometimes to see, I carry a little pocket mirror so I can uh, get an idea of what's going on. Okay. In the plug inside the bed, and I'll have to do that uh, using Braille, I suppose. Ouch. Brake and turn signal function is the final pre-driving check. Yes. Okay, so the camper's laid up? Yes. The lights are on? Okay. Wonderful. I'm going to finish backing up and to get those front bump stops up against the front. I've got about two inches to go, so it'll bump again and uh, shout howdy ho when I, when I do that. Okay. About nine and a quarter inches. Maybe I don't really want to know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nine and a quarter inches, both sides. Pretty good guess for the first time. We had marked the fast gun clamp positions. This one is passenger side rear for easier installation because each is adjusted to a somewhat different length. Let's see how tight that is. felt good before we took the camper off the first time and and uh, no reason it shouldn't feel good now. With spring coming on we know we're going to be out spending a bunch of time in this guy. Practice makes camper unloading and loading a fairly easy job that's part of truck camper ownership. Now we're plugged in, locked down, and ready for the road. To find out more about truck campers, be sure to visit our media friends over at truckcampermagazine.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit rvingtoday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When 
Bedford launched AquaChem. It didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Hi, this is Michelle from RVing Today. This destination story is Mystic, Connecticut, which is a village in Groton and Stonington, Connecticut. Historically, Mystic was a significant seaport with more than 600 ships built over 135 years, starting in 1784. Mystic is a busy village, so I chose to stay at the Mystic KOA Holiday, which is very close to everything and has all the great amenities. Ten minutes away is our first stop, the Mystic Seaport Museum. Parking is free, and they have large parking lots. You might find a spot for your RV. You can spend an hour or a day in this beautiful area. It consists of more than 60 historic buildings, most of them rare commercial structures, moved there to the 19-acre site and meticulously restored. This is a 19th century seafaring village. What a great way to spend a day. And it offers wonderful educational opportunities as well. You can actually get on board some of these ancient ships. Does your RV have a name? Mine does. Many of us name our RVs. It's kind of fun. But boat naming started over a thousand years ago when sailors named their vessels after gods, goddesses, or saints hoping to bring good fortune to their travels. The wrong name could be the difference between good luck and being lost at sea. It also usually involved an elaborate ceremony, a christening with wine or champagne poured on the boat. Mystic Seaport also has a working shipyard where traditional techniques are taught to new generations. If you're hungry or thirsty, there are lots of opportunities at Mystic Seaport, from cafes to taverns to restaurants. But we have special lunch plans elsewhere. Be sure to check out the Seaport stores on your way out. Many interesting items, many of them with a nautical theme as you would expect. Our next stop today is the Mystic Aquarium. This is one of my grandson's favorite spots. This marine aquarium has one of only two United States facilities holding stellar sea lions, and it has the only beluga whales in New England. One of the special exhibits is a real treat to my grandson, the Jurassic Giants Dinosaur Exhibit. So if you have children, do consider visiting the Mystic Aquarium. And now for lunch. One of my favorite places to eat in this area is Mystic Pizza, and it just so happens that it was the launch of one of our favorite actresses, Julia Roberts. The story goes, our pizza captivated screenwriter Amy Jones while she was summering in the area. Miss Jones chose Mystic Pizza as the focus and setting of her latest work. Her story follows the lives and loves of three young waitresses, the movie was filmed all over Mystic and in neighboring towns. The classic film, Mystic Pizza, was released in the fall of 1988. I can attest to the fact that their food, very delicious. I got the Veggie Delight pizza, a salad, and a glass of vino, and it made a wonderful lunch. While enjoying the village shops after lunch, I was delighted to hear the sound of the drawbridge going up. The Mystic River Bascule Bridge actually connects the Groton side of Mystic with the Stonington side of Mystic, and it's a famous drawbridge built in 1922. What a great ending to our visit to Mystic, Connecticut.
for more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, along with additional videos, interesting stories, and RV news, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.